Oh. <gasps> okay, I'll see you later then. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Raina, I'm a fourth year dental student and today I'm doing another collab video with Faris, who some of you might know of. Hi, I'm Faris. I'm currently a third year dental student at King's College London. I've also got a dental YouTube channel, Faris Dent, so check that out when you're free. We're gonna be busting some fairly annoying myths about dentists and dentistry in general. Thank you to everyone that sent these over via our Instagrams. And we're gonna be discussing some more myths over on Faris's channel, so make sure to subscribe to him and watch that video as well. Okay, so the first myth is dentists only look at teeth. <sighs> mm. I think it's quite well known now that we don't just look at the teeth, guys, I promise you. We do learn a lot in dental school and way more than I thought before I joined. Um, we pretty much learn about the whole body and the systems because so much is related to the mouth. So the next one is dentists can't prescribe drugs. Okay, I feel like this one's just because people just don't know. We, we can prescribe drugs. Um, you, actually, a lot of people can prescribe drugs that aren't necessarily like medical doctors. You can get something called like a prescribing license. So I think you can get it as a pharmacist, if I'm not wrong. Um, certain types of nurses can get them as well if they go through special training. Basically, from what I understand, dentists, we can prescribe anything in the BNF, which is the British National Formulary, privately. But then on the NHS, we can only prescribe from the list of dental preparations in the dental practitioner's formulary. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so the next myth is dentistry is a backup choice for medicine. Oh, <laughs> this one gets to be a lot. <laughs> mm. Yep, another one, another common one, lads. Um, at some point I did consider medicine, I'll be honest, but dentistry isn't necessarily my backup choice. It was just the one that I thought I'd enjoy the most. And I feel like a lot of people think that, oh, if you don't do med, it's just because, you know, you're not smart enough, etc., etc. But dentistry is just as hard to get into. Yeah, they are such different degrees and they do have the same entry requirements, like both pretty much need three A's, um, you know, a fairly okay, decent UCAT score, personal statement, interview, like the actual path to get into them are very similar, but the actual degrees are very different. And I don't think I've really come across that many people who have considered both. You're either very into dentistry or you're very into medicine. A lot of medics that I've spoken to have always been like, oh, I could never, you know, put my hands in someone else's mouth. So I think that aspect of dentistry does put a lot of people off, but it's definitely not a backup choice for medicine. Dentistry is actually so hard, and especially at dental school, you have so much responsibility with patients. Okay, so the next myth is that dentists only do scale and polish. I don't know where this one's come from. I feel like it's something that is quite common. Definitely we do a lot of scale and polish, but there's so many different treatments and so many different procedures that we have to do. I know I definitely wouldn't be doing dentistry if it was only scale and polish. Like no that is probably one of the least interesting things that we do. We do dentures, um, we do crown preparations, veneers, um, whitening, there's, there's so many different things that we can do. Everything's its own specialty as well. So you have endodontics, so stuff like the root canal treatment, you've got your prosthodontics, your more cosmetic stuff, orthodontics, your braces. Like there is so much to be covered and so many treatments that dentists do. It's, it's not just scale and polish. Okay, so the next myth is related to a type of treatment and it is veneers are bad because you need to shave down the tooth to a pin. Yeah, um, big, 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 big no-no when it comes to the shaving down to the pin thing. I know a lot of people have seen that image of like Katie Price and on TikTok with the little like pegs. We don't do that. If any dentist tells you you need to do that, just please just leave. Just leave the practice straight away. Dental tourism is a huge, huge problem and that is where people are going abroad and they are getting very, very invasive treatment done where the teeth are unnecessarily shaved down. So they're very healthy teeth. Veneers, in general, they are there is still some prep you need to do. You need to shave the tooth down slightly, but it's nowhere near to the levels that you see online. So do not be fooled. And even with crown preps, which are already like really, really invasive, you still don't shave it down to that degree. And crowns are basically kind of caps that go over the entire tooth like this. Whereas veneers just go on like the front surface of your teeth. So obviously way less invasive. And there are dentists out there that are doing this unethical treatment to teeth. And the thing is with crowns, they need replacing like every 10 years or so. And then by the time you're 40, you're probably gonna end up with dentures because there's only so many times you can re-prep the teeth. Okay, so the next myth is that dentists don't save lives, they just rob people's money. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> this one, this one's a mean, this is just a bit mean to be honest, like this just hurts. Dentists are a massive screening tool when it comes to things like oral cancers, looking at abscesses that can qu get quite bad in the person's mouth, in the person's oral region. And by people regularly coming to the dentist for a checkup, we can look for signs of this. So that is one aspect of that. With dentistry, there's a band system and depending on the amount of treatment that you need, you'll be paying a certain band. And this is not a choice that us dentists have made. This is the way that it, the healthcare system for dentistry works in the UK, but there is help with costs for NHS dentistry. So I don't think it's that we are robbing people of their money. Um, everything is done with consent. We're explaining all the treatment options to patients. Okay, so the next myth is that dentists only care about how people look. Hmm, no. Um, I, I don't get this one again. I, 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 get, I sometimes, just, I read some of these, I just get confused. I'm like, yeah, it's just, no, we, we don't really care. Uh, about how people look. The main thing as a dentist is just making sure that you're able to control any of the disease or any of the, any of the problems that are happening in the patient. Um, and then when it comes to aesthetics, that's all the patient's decision. It's not like the dentist tells you, oh, you need to do this treatment to look good. Yeah, it's first and foremost, prioritizing the functional needs of the patient and controlling any disease, preventing disease. You should always be managing disease first before you look at the aesthetics. 100%. Okay, so the next myth is all dental students are rich and are from privilege. This is a complete myth. It's, people come from all types of backgrounds when it comes to dentistry. At the end of the day, it's not like in the interviews they're trying to work out how privileged you are to give you an offer or a place. It's more about your grades, it's more about your personality, etc. So if those sh things shine through, uh, that's the most important thing when it comes to dentistry. I think in terms of getting into dental school nowadays, it's been quite good that there are a lot of access schemes and widening participation into dental school. And the majority of people get student loans, so there is help with costs. I will say, however, that I think with dentistry, there is a high maintenance cost. Now, what I mean by that is, for example, dental loops, they are quite an expensive piece of equipment and you do need you know, some sort of financial backing to be able to afford things like that, that will make your work better. And then after you graduate, there are courses that you need to go on, which are often quite expensive. This is something that I didn't realize before dental school, that there is quite a bit of a cost in maintaining your skills and getting better even after dental school. Do you agree with that, by the way? Do you think that there is a bit of a high running or like maintenance cost? Yeah, I do. I feel like dentist? it's not even just a cost in terms of like actual money. It's just investment of time as well. It's not like you just do your dental degree and you're just ready to be out there in the world. There's just so much more you have to do to be competitive in the field. And then once you graduate, you might have a special interest or you might want to specialize and then there's just extra costs. and. It kind of keeps going. I guess, you know, your salary is quite decent, so it does support that, but there's definitely, I think, dentistry versus medicine, there's definitely a higher cost associated with dentistry. The purpose of dental school is to just make you a safe beginner. It's not necessarily to make you at that yeah. level where you're able to do tr treatment straight away without any assistance. So that's why you have to invest that time and that money. Yeah once you do graduate, etc, etc. Okay, and the next myth is that Sheffield Dental School always win BDSA no, Sports just no, Day. No, 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 just relax, <laughs> relax. No, no, no. Yes, no, yes no, we no. do. I think, I, look. <laughs> there was like one year, I think when I was second year, we went to Liverpool and Liverpool won. Do you see how she remembers the year as well? It just shows you like, this is the only thing that's going for Sheffield, really. No, for real. Okay, they, they do win it quite a lot, <laughs> I'll admit. I'm just going to leave it there because I, yeah, I feel like this one's a bit of a losing battle, to be honest. Faris, when was the last time Kings won it? Okay, I'll see you later then. Um... <laughs> Look, okay, King, we're, we're, okay. Not, we're not the BDSA, but okay, like, that's, that's not our thing. BDSA Sports for Kings is not our is not our forte, let's just state that. Maybe we should quickly explain what BDSA Sports Day is. So it's the British... Oh, sorry. British Dental... No, hang on. British Dental Students Association Sports Day. And basically all the dental schools in the UK get together at one dental school and they play sports against each other for a weekend. Um, unfortunately, it was cancelled last year and I don't know if it's still going to be running. I'm not sure if you've heard anything about this, but I, I don't know if it's still going to happen. It was a great weekend, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got to admit, I've never actually been to the sports days. So I've, I've seen my mates go, yeah, I know, I know, sinful. <laughs> I've never been to the sports days. Everyone says they're really good and I should go. And I was like, I was going to go with 
this year oh, and then obviously it's COVID. so good if it is still gonna run i would highly recommend if there's any dental students watching please go and meet other people from other schools because otherwise you are kind of just in your dental school and you never get to see anyone else really okay so those are all the myths about dentistry that we're discussing in this video please head over to faris's channel to see the other myths and thank you so much to everyone that sent them in and i'll see you again in the next one see ya Bye.